So you want to have a web server with PHP and a MySQL database server running on your Windows 10 machine in order to create your websites locally on your machine. Sounds quite easy, so let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is install a web server. So a piece of software which is going to make a website available to your browser on your PC. The most commonly used until today is Apache. So we will go to apachelaunch.com, link in the description below, and here we'll choose the newest version with the Win64 text at the end of its name. Once the zip file is downloaded, we can open it up, put it on the side and open a new explorer window. In this one, we will navigate to the C drive and then we will drag and drop the whole Apache24 folder into it. Once that's done, we will open up the Windows search and look for CMD, so the command prompt window. And we will open it up in administrator mode. Now in here, we need to navigate into a specific Apache folder. So we are going to type cd slash cd apache24 and cd bin. Of course, each time confirming with enter. Now we are inside of that Apache folder, which contains a bunch of executable instruction files. And what we are going to do is execute a set of instructions, which is going to install Apache as a service, meaning that the web server will be running in the background without you noticing it. Uh, additionally, this also means that the web server will be starting up with your Windows, so you don't need to start it every time you want to work on it. To do so, we are going to type httpd k install. And oh, we have a missing DLL error. Yeah, this DLL error is appearing because Windows is missing a specific DLL file to do all of that stuff. You may get it, you may not, probably not, because the missing DC runtime140.dll file is installed with basically every program that exists. But the system that I am using here is a completely fresh install, nothing has been done to it yet, so hence why I got the error. If you got it, no trouble. Just jump to our VC runtime 140.dll fixing tutorial and it will be solved within a minute. Okay, once that's done, we can reuse the command hdpd k install and it will execute completely with a couple of error messages. Now, because of these error messages, the web server is installed, but it is not running until we resolve them. And that's also pretty easy because we just need to set a server name because Apache wants one. So we'll open up the conf folder in which all of the configuration files are stored. In here we'll open up the httpd.conf by right-clicking it, choosing open with and selecting our notepad. This file here contains every configuration of the main part of Apache. And if we scroll down, we will find lines saying server name www.example and so on. For this line, remove the hashtag in front of it and replace the URL with localhost. And then we just save with Ctrl S and close it down. So now we basically told Apache that it is going to react to the local host address, so ourselves. And to test if everything is working fine, we just need to stop Apache and start it up again. So we will type httpd k stop to stop it and httpd k start to start it up. And now if we open up a browser and type in localhost, we're gonna get this it works site, which is basically just an empty template of Apache, which is telling us that Apache is working just fine. Okay, now we have the web server out of the way, so it's time to install a PHP interpreter. For the purpose of this video, we'll be using PHP version 8.0, which is the newest at the time of recording. But if you are watching this on a later moment, Please make sure to use the links in the description below. Don't just go on Google and, and type in PHP and take the newest one. Because A, you don't need it, and B, there is a very small portion of this tutorial that is made for PHP version 8.0 and newer version, versions may need a different configuration, so just stick to PHP version 8.0. Okay, on the website, we are going to download the 64-bit ThreadSafe version. So VS16 x64 ThreadSafe and click on the zip link. And please make sure that it is the ThreadSafe version. That's really important. 
Okay, with PHP downloaded, we're gonna open up the zip file and put it on the side and then we will navigate back to our C drive with a new window. Here we are going to create a folder called PHP, open it up and we will drag everything within the zip file into it. So now we are at the point where we have a working PHP interpreter which is ready on the system but we need to make sure that Apache knows where and what it really is so that it can successfully send PHP code into it and get probably HTML code out. To do so, we need to go back into our Apache 24 folder and then into conf. Here, just like before, we open up the httpd.conf with our notepad. In here we will scroll a bit down and underneath that whole load module block here, we will add the following lines. And these are basically just instructions where and how Apache should treat PHP. Now after that we're gonna keep scrolling down until we find this if module dear block. Here we are going to add index.php in front of index.html. And this will basically just tell Apache that it should access .php files before it takes the .html version. Okay, and now we can simply save it and close it again. But before we can test if PHP is working, we need to write some PHP. So we are going to head back into the Apache folder and then into the htdocs folder. And this htdocs folder is really important. This is the folder which Apache is making available through your browser. And the it works site that we've seen before is basically just the index.html file we can see in here. So from now on, everything you will be working on should be going into this htdocs folder. But we need to test if PHP is working. So let's just delete the file and create a new one, which we'll, we'll call again index. Now the issue is that Windows will make the file a .txt by default and we want a PHP file. So we are going to enable the file name extension option and we will make sure that the .txt extension is replaced with .php, leaving us with exactly this. And now we can open it up in our notepad and write the following lines. And these lines are basically just a small command which tells PHP to display every setting, every extension and everything else it knows about itself. But before we can see it, we need to tell Apache that things have changed. Basically the PHP is now there, so we need to restart it. So we're just gonna head over to a CMD and we will type HTTPD minus K restart. And now if we open a browser again and refresh our site, we will be greeted with this chunky year 2000 like looking website which just indicates that php is working fine okay so now we are at the point where we have a working apache web server a working php interpreter that can evaluate our code and do html and the last thing we are going to need is a mysql database server to store all of our data for this we will head over to mysql's website again link in the description below and here we will choose the second file and click on download. Now don't panic, you don't need to register anything, just click on no thanks and the download will just start. Once you're all set and open the installer, we will be greeted with this little window. Here we can leave the developer option on because it's perfectly fine for us and proceed with next and next again. Then we can ignore this message with yes because that's for a different programming language and next again and then we can click on execute. Now this process may take a couple of minutes because it's installing everything, but once it's done, we can click again on next and then it will show us the standard port configuration, which we will also leave as it is and we will click, yeah, you, you guessed it, next and next again. And then comes the only important window. Here we need to set a root password. So the password of the most important user of our database, our administrator, so to speak. So set it, repeat it, and don't forget it. And then of course click on next twice. Here MySQL will just perform a self check so, so let it do with execute and confirm or finish and next, next, next and so on. But the nice thing about MySQL is that one of the last screens is basically just an idiot filter. Uh, here you will be forced to test a database connection by retyping your root password. So do so and click on check. And if you are not an idiot, the next button will be unlocked and you can proceed by clicking next and then 
finally execute the last config and then next, 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 next until the window will close. Okay, now after the window closed, MySQL is installed and for some reason it will auto open a MySQL CMD window but you can just close it down. Additionally, um, it will also auto start MySQL Workbench and this tool is really important from now on. This basically gives you access to your database with a nice interface, create new tables, write data, read data, whatever you want to do in, uh, for the database, you can do it in here. In many cases, people will tell you to install phpMyAdmin, which is basically the same thing, just less. So if you already prepared the comment, where is phpMyAdmin, you don't need it, this is now your phpMyAdmin. Okay, so now we have a working Apache web server which can handle PHP files and can be opened through the local host address. And we have a working MySQL server in the background to store all of our data which can now be accessed through PHP in, in form of code or MySQL Workbench in form of a nice looking UI. So you are basically all set and ready to create your own website and you know that everything should be going into the htdocs folder. So this basically brings us to the end of the tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it and that it helped you out. If so, make sure to leave a like and comment down below what exact project you are doing this tutorial for. And make sure to be subscribed to not miss another one of these tutorials or just support the channel because it helps us out. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you on the next one.